How do you know if your plant has foliar nematode damage? What if it's a disease, a virus, or another pest? After around five minutes with me, a plant scientist, you'll know for certain if your plant has foliar nematode damage from the symptoms and a simple test, and then how you can treat foliar nematodes. But first, what does the damage from foliar nematodes look like? Foliar nematodes are tiny, barely visible, colourless worms. So you won't easily see these pests, but you will see the damage they cause. Foliar nematodes are also known as leaf and bud nematodes, or eelworms. As their name suggests, foliar nematodes feed on the parts of the plant that are above the ground. Foliar nematode damage starts as a sickly patchwork of light yellow or pale green discoloration on the leaves, later turning darker shades, orange, brown, purple or black like you can see here on this Japanese anemone leaf. The foliar nematodes can't cross the veins in the leaf, which is why the foliar nematode feeding pattern creates these angular, hemmed-in, straight-edged, discoloured patches or spots. In hostas or other plant leaves with parallel veins, you may see long yellow or brown streaks between the veins, rather than angular patches. But how do you know it's not something similar? A virus or bacterial leaf spot? Viruses can have similar yellowy discoloration or mottling, like on this virus-infected rose leaf. However, discoloration from a virus usually stays light yellow or green. But with foliar nematode leaf damage, in just weeks, the yellow discoloration turns to a dark brown or black colour, like you can see on this Brunnera Jack Frost. Brunneras easily fall victim to foliar nematode damage. And here's a magnolia with bacterial leaf spot. Notice the similar angular spots that stay within the lines of the leaf veins. However, bacterial leaf spots like this typically have this obvious bright yellow halo around the dark spots, which you won't see with foliar nematodes. You'll most likely spot foliar nematode damage in mild and wet weather, so in the UK that's late summer and autumn. Foliar nematodes can also feed on flower buds and new shoots. This nematode feeding can cause twisty, bendy, stunted distortion of the leaves and flowers. Foliar nematodes can infect hundreds of different plants. In your garden, you'll most likely find foliar nematodes on ferns, hostas, Japanese anemones, branera, echinacea, peony and strawberries. Note, many nematodes are friends, helping control pests like slugs or vine weevils, but foliar nematodes are generally the bad guys. So now you've found possible nematode symptoms, let's check if it's really nematode infection with that easy test I mentioned earlier. First, get a magnifying glass or hand lens. Then, roughly cut up a suspiciously symptomatic leaf and add just enough water to cover it. Leave the leaf in the water for around four hours. Then, put a droplet of the leafy water onto some clear plastic or glass and take a look at the droplet of water under magnification. If the leaf is infected, you will now easily spot the nematodes frantically wriggling around in the water droplet. So, do you need to worry about foliar nematodes on your plants? Is there a treatment? As you've seen, foliar nematodes won't destroy your plants entirely, but they can make them look rather ugly. There are, however, a few plants where foliar nematode damage is serious, but more on that later. There are no chemical treatments or pesticides available to control foliar nematodes. But here's what you can do. First of all, don't buy infected plants. Inspect any plants before you buy them. Look for those suspicious yellow to brown discoloured marks on the leaves, like we saw earlier. Only buy the plant if the leaves look healthy. If your garden has just one or two plants with foliar nematode infection, just pull them out. But what if foliar nematode damage is all over your garden? Live and let live, to some extent. You'll still want to stop foliar nematodes from causing too much damage. Clean up any dead plant material over winter, because foliar nematodes need plant material to live. They can only live for a few months in the soil. Also, clean your hands and tools. Avoid pruning infected plants during wet weather. Wet weather allows nematodes to travel outside of the leaf 
and spread throughout your garden. So also avoid overhead watering of your plants. Instead, water at the base, like you can see here. Now, as I mentioned, there are a few exceptions where foliar nematode damage is more than cosmetic. For example, foliar nematode damage on strawberries results in small, squishy strawberries and fewer of them. Practice tough love. Remove infected strawberry plants as soon as you spot them. Wishing you healthy plants and happy gardening.